it. Like you just have to tr like trust your heart. If your heart's saying, hey, this is too much, take a step back. If your heart's saying, no, 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 let's keep going right now. It's the right time to push. Keep pushing. What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the show. We know you got dreams and so do we. So let's get rolling. All right, folks, we're going to be jumping into the updates, the industry news, and that foreword. But if you're already tired of seeing my face, you know that the timestamps are in the description down below. All right, guys, coming right at you with the updates. Not really too much going on. Uh, Clay has an ear infection, so that sucks. Thoughts and prayers to him. And I haven't really done much except watch copious amount of anime, but... What else is new? But the thing that I really wanted to get into uh, is what Phil has been doing behind the scenes because he is the real MVP of this show. And that is going absolutely ham. Not like ham the meat. I mean like hard as a mofo, H-A-M, all capitals, on blasting social media with all of our profiles. So if you guys are not following the show yet, on social media, and when I say on social media, I mean like literally anywhere on social media, I don't know what you're doing at this point. Uh, Phil has been working his butt off to put us up on every social media platform under the sun. You got Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, IMBD, the whole nine, like everything. So if you're on social media, if you got some favorites, make sure you guys are finding the Get Rolling show on your favorite social media platforms and that you are throwing us a follow so you could stay up to date with the latest and greatest that is going on in our lives and with the show as a whole. All right, guys, that is the updates. Now let's throw it over to Clay with that industry news. <laughs> Thanks, Ian. Time for some industry news. The podcast caller Daddy, owned by Barstool, is having some contract disputes, you could say. The caller Daddy girls want more money. El Presidente offered more money. Apparently, it's not enough money, so there's no deal, and there might not be a caller Daddy podcast. So. I don't listen to it anyway, but just thought you should know. If you want to talk about a podcast I actually listen to, Joe Rogan is now exclusive to Spotify, He's getting a big money contract. People are saying it's worth about $100 million. So good for you, Mr. Joe. We love you. Keep it up. Love your face very much. Oh! Do you like garbage music? Well, if you do like garbage music, then you should check out Takashi 6 ix new song, Gooba. It's garbage. Check it out. Speaking of things that aren't garbage, 13 Reasons Why is coming out with their final season, season 4, June 5th. Looks freaking awesome. Check it out. Don't freak out. I will be watching it the first day it comes out. The whole thing. Because it's freaking awesome. So watch it. Okay? We on the same page? Watch the show. It's good. This week's shout out goes out to Brett Conti. Brett Conti is a New York City lifestyle vlogger. He skateboards. He makes cool travel videos. He's just awesome. Check him out. His link is going to be in the description. Do it. Now, Mr. Phil Blevins, take it away. Yeah, um... Thanks, thank you, Clay, for that. What the f Today's guest is a big one, literally. He's like six foot four. I'm, I'm slouching, I need to sit up a little bit, you know. A proud Canadian actor who you saw in the Netflix movie, The Half of It, where he stole the hearts of thousands of people in the role of Paul Munsky. He is one of the most talented, intelligent, and most importantly, one of the most kind people I've ever met. Today's guest is Daniel Deemer. Put those headphones on, we're rolling. All right, Daniel, welcome to the show. We are so pumped to have you on, bro. We are very lucky well, to have you. We know you've been very busy the last couple of weeks too. So thank you for coming on, man. Of course, man, no, excited to be here. And excited to see you again. It's been, it's been a little bit. I know, it's been like a year, so. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited to see you. Yeah. Awesome. All right, so we won't waste any time. We'll jump right into it. Um, we just wanted to learn a little bit about you before we, we dive into a little bit of the juicy part of the interview. No, I'm just kidding. But, um, <laughs> you've lived in LA for how long now? About a year? About a year now. Basically, okay. uh, as soon as we finished filming, um, back in like, I think we finished filming like June 1st, I went back home to Canada for a little bit and mm -hmm. then moved down here, I think right, right, right towards the end of, end of June, early July. Okay. And how was acting growing up in Canada? What was the I mean, difference? Or I mean, like, I, think would... I, I didn't actually start acting until I was like 18. So I was, mm -hmm. I was training five hours a day as an athlete for most of my life. And 
And uh, then when I kind of switched out of that, I actually went to, to university for pre-med first. Um, wow. so I was doing, I did that first semester and then got accepted to a couple programs for uh, genetic engineering and, and nursing. Um, and then uh, I had like eight months off before this program started. And so I needed a part-time job. I've been coaching tennis for like six, seven years or so at that, at that point. And I just wanted a bit of a break, something new. And I'd done like one music video in high school to get out of like an English class. Uh, <laughs> and so I had a lot of fun on that. And I was like, hey, like knowing nothing about the industry, I was like, let's, let's try this. And so I just got really fucking lucky with just meeting the right people uh, at the right times. And, and they kind of like introduced me into kind of like how to go about it. So I went to acting school for a year um, and back in Victoria, which is like a small town on an island near Vancouver. Um, and, and so again, like nobody there really like that, that was working professionally on anything too big. So it was just like a lot of people, a lot of people in that area, just did a lot of like local theater. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I moved to Vancouver, I got introduced to um, a really great agency, one of the top ones in Canada. And they kind of took me on and, and things started going from there. But it was, um, I mean, compared to LA, I mean, I, I like I come at it from very biased opinion because like, I mean, my experience of LA, LA has always been after a certain amount of success back in Vancouver. Right. So I think for kids or, or, or anybody who's trying to start an acting career off in LA, it's going to be a very different experience than I have where like, I mean, there's a few hundred thousand actors over here. It's absolutely insane. I mean, in New York, it's the same sort of thing. Incredible amount of density to the population there. And if you have no credits coming in, it's just really hard to get seen unless you have a really, really good representation and that's hard to get right off the bat. So um, I think, Vancouver, it's, it's, it's an interesting city to be working out of because a lot of it's CW, all of it's Hallmark, a lot of Lifetime. New York has much more indie kind of feature film kind of vibe where it's a little bit art, artsy in that regard. Um, LA has the big massive studio features that they're putting together. So it was a very different type of market for, for acting, I guess. And, but, but the benefit that we had is just because of how, how little the saturation was, it was a lot easier to get seen. So I think within mm. a year of really auditioning professionally, I'd seen... 70% of the casting directors in, 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 in my city. Um, wow. and I had no, sure. I, I came into it like 18, 19. I was auditioning against guys have been doing it since they were like six or seven. So that was, that was huge. I mean, there's not a ton of casting directors, but I was able to see most of them. So, um, it was, I mean, in that regard, it, it was just, I got really lucky, I think just in terms of location and then just in terms of the team that I had, and then they really believed in me. And I mean, it took me two years to book my first job. Um, so it was like over 80 auditions of just like, no, like straight nose constantly. And, and me kind of like doubting like, Hey, maybe I, maybe I should go back to like to the pre-med, go become a doctor, get the steady paycheck. Uh, I mean, I was living in this like tiny, tiny room. I, I didn't even have enough room for a full on bed. So I had like a desk set up, uh, where I had to do, where I would do my, like, um, work on the side where I would put together auditions and whatnot. And then I slept on basically like one of those like fold out sofas. So, it, but it was like, it wasn't big enough to actually be a full out bed. So it was just like kind of leaning <laughs> up to the side of the wall. I'd kind of like sleep in the crook of it. And Aww. so I did that for a while. And that, I, that was actually after yeah, sleeping on the floor for the first year. So wow. yeah, I, had, I had a really like interesting start to that. But um, after like two years, I finally booked my first job. And, and ever since then, I've been like really, really lucky and being able to keep it up, just making a living, scraping by through, through kind of the work. Wow. Yeah. And you're a very tall gentleman as well. So I don't, I want that to be known that a pullout sofa was not enough to support the, this unit of a man. <laughs> I know, dude, I'm the same way. Like if my bed, my room's small, but it's like, yeah, obviously not trying to compare, but like when my feet, when my feet hang off the freaking edge of the bed, dude, like, oh my God, I can't sleep. I can't sleep. But I do it properly. So perhaps half the time my girlfriend makes fun of me because like my head will be jammed up against the wall just so my feet don't hang off the edge of the bed. <laughs> so I'm like, dude, dude, I, I mean, know. Like the main reason I want to get famous was to be able to make enough money so that I could like a big bed. <laughs> Dude, that's they, incentive. They right have there. it, folks. That's the, main, the main motivator for Daniel. Yeah, Yee. that's the motivation. Yeah. That yeah. No, on on a serious <laughs> note, though, that actually does segue segue me into a question that I had for you because you said you were going at this for roughly about two years of straight yeah. nose before you yeah. before you got on. I wanted to talk um, about any sort of significant roadblocks that you may have experienced and or any ones that stand out to you or that like molded you as a person and like how did you come over those did you smash through them did you hop over them did you go around them like what did what what was that like if, if you could think of any 
I mean, like, I don't, like, there really wasn't anything specific. I mean, I was working, like, 50 hours a week at a restaurant that I hated to go to. I had some amazing people that I got to work with. Mm. Um, but but it was just, like, the, that atmosphere and environment of the specific place wasn't necessarily ideal. Plus, I'm also really shy and introverted. So I was just exhausted by the end of each day. And then I'd get home. If there was an audition, I had to prep. I was usually, like, I'd have to memorize, like, six to ten pages sometimes in a night because we'd get the audition the next day. And it was just, like... I think that was probably the hardest thing was just be able to stay mentally kind of focused so that um, after the long hours, uh, hours of work, I was able to still go into auditions, like looking at least like I was refreshed and, and ready to go. Um, and that, and just know the material back to front. Um, I guess like in, in terms of like that, it was just like, I think it was the, the hardest thing was just like the general grind of it. Like the, the mental kind of just pressure to be like, Hey, we got a book now. I think that's what you're always thinking about no matter what you're doing is like whether you're in business where you're like either the company needs to start like seeing some better results or if you're an athlete i need more wins on the roster i need to be playing for a better team i think everything you have there's always like this pressure to be impatient with yourself and to be like hey we got to get to the next thing as fast as possible otherwise we're not mm. going to make it and sure. so i think it was trying to relax on that um it really like i, I for the first like couple of years I, I put a big emphasis on just making acting everything so I wasn't like, I had very little money. So I, all the rest of the money that I had was, was put towards class. Um, and so I didn't have enough money to go out, out to eat for restaurants. I was cooking everything at home. I didn't have enough money to date. Um, and so it wasn't until I started like taking time, prioritizing my own mental health and my own like life that I started to see so many more results on the acting side of things where I was just to be able to be like, Hey, I actually enjoy where I'm at personally. And, and it's not all about that. It's about me as a human being. And so I started to grow more as, 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 a, as a man. And then um, as like, I mean, I was like 19, 20. So like starting to figure out who I was, you know, start asking myself questions about like why I think the way I did and, and kind of like restructure myself to be sort of the person that I kind of always wanted to be. And when I started to find confidence in that, that's really when the acting took off more so than actually becoming a better actor. Yeah, that's, that's interesting that you say that too, because obviously you strike me as someone that's very disciplined. Obviously, that's abundantly clear just from what you've said already. Uh, you come from, you know, a background in sports, um, you know, where you said you were training at, you know, five, you know, five hours at a clip a day and things like that. And um, I know that some of the, you know, the people in this show are generally like minded in that sense where it's like, you know, the, the priority to perfection. Um, but it's interesting that you say, that it wasn't until you took a step back and kind of went with the current as it were, you know what I mean? Yeah. That it, that's when you started to see an emphasis on growth, you know what I mean? Rather than forcing it, the other, you know, um, you're kind of coaxing it. Yeah. So I think, I think that's interesting. And that's a lesson that a lot of people can learn because I think people, especially that are, you know, maybe listening to the show and that have a similar mind frame, you know, as all of us, we all want to succeed and we all want to, you know, do the best that we can be. And we're all probably very hard on ourselves. I know yeah. I am. Um, you know what I mean? To, to have that bit of advice, I feel is crucial, you know, it is, it's not just important. It's crucial. To I have. think so. I think so. I think it also depends just on who you are though. Cause like my, like, for example, like my younger brother, he's, he's a, like a bit of a genius. And, uh, he was also like, like a really top level athlete. He played a div one tennis for university of Denver and was one of the top players in Canada, but, um, also extraordinarily smart. And for him, um, the, the, the route was different. It really was like for him, he was able to push through without having mental health consequences. Mm. Like he was able to force himself every day. I mean, he got his master's degree by the time he was 20. Um, so like, it, it was like, there, there, I think for certain people, it, like you just have to tr like, trust your heart. If your heart's saying, Hey, this is too much, take a step back. If your heart's saying, no, 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 let's keep going right now. It's the right time to push. Keep pushing. I think, I think really like everybody has their own road. And so I, I don't want to be like, hey, like I found success early. This is how you find success. Mine's just one example. And I mean, I know for, for a fact that you guys are all going to be very different from each other, very different from me. And I think that like for some people to take a step off the, off, off the pedal and just like slow down, it might be almost more detrimental. So I think it's really being just honest with yourself is the key. Mm. It is just really being like, hey, like if I don't find success right now, that's okay. Or, or if I, or if like, I need to find success right now for specific reasons, that's also okay. I mean, if you're I need to take care of a family, it's a very different story than when you're a single guy. And so, um, I think everybody has their own road. And I think if they're, when you're taking that path, whatever it is, wherever you're at, I think it's just like, I think honesty is the, is the, is like the most important thing in that regard. hundred percent. Yeah. Love well that. said, honesty with yourself. Love that. Yeah. Especially in such a unpredictable career, like acting, I feel like if you're not, giving yourself the head strength that you need to really get through that and the 
right mindset, you're not going to be able to do it because like, even though you work very hard for two years, some people work hard for 10 years or 15. Mm -hmm. And I love that. I I think that's very helpful, especially as an actor myself trying to make it, if you will. Mm -hmm. I take that as great advice. Definitely. I mean, I mean, two years is nothing, man. Like I got, like I literally Mm -hmm. got so lucky with, with so many things. I mean, even after that, it was like, it was only like, I think a year, year and a half before I was finishing off filming the half of it. I mean, so to be able to have like two years of nothing, and then within another two years, have your entire life change is absolutely insane. So um, I think it, there, there's like certain things where I do recommend like the, dis, the discipline um, and, and certain certain things I think are really important to think about and to question who you are. But I think it is also like being like, okay with like whatever your path is. Cause I mean, again, like I, I, I no matter what, you say or do like you can't like figure certain things out like so much of my success came from the right people at the right time mm-hmm. um, I mean for, even for the role of Paul Munsky they auditioned close to 500 other guys lots of them were A-listers and so if, wow. if any if Alice the director had had been like yeah any of these guys are, are is close enough to the role let's go with them I wouldn't have even had the chance to be to be seen and so it could have taken me another two three years to kind of get to where I am or even longer and so there's, there is a lot of luck that plays into it. And then it is just being kind of prepared for when, when the opportunity kind of comes and then just make sure that you're, you're able to be in a healthy enough place that you can really put hundred percent in. Yeah. Uh, there's definitely a lot of patience like involved in the process of trying to make it. Um, a lot of people when they're, you know, trying to become actors and things and get into more creative industries, they're like, Oh, I have to go to New York or mm-hmm. I have to go to LA. But you said you started in Vancouver. I was wondering if that is something that you would recommend to people trying to make it in like the creative industry to start in a smaller market city where you have like more of a bigger fish in a small pond kind of thing before going to New York or LA? I think it really, de- again, depends on like the experience you're coming in with. Like, w- like if you have connections at-, at all, I had no connections. Plus I'm a Canadian myself. So I just couldn't move to LA or, or New York. You need a visa illegally. I just wouldn't be allowed to go down. Um, and so I think I had no choice. Vancouver was pretty much the biggest city we have alongside Toronto. Um, so I, it was still like a big move for me. Like that really kind of was the biggest I could go to. Um, mm-hmm. so I think it depends on, on, on again, like, just like what your heart's saying. And I know some, some guys that, that stayed back on the Island I was from and they're still working consistently. They're, they're, they've got some decent roles under their belt, not while well, like, and working in Vancouver, even though they go back home, to, to the island at the end of the day or, or other guys that I know that have been, that have got like families and that I've met on set and, and they're like 35, 40 years old. They have a, like, like a five-year-old child. And for them, the reason why they stayed there was so that they could like raise their family in a consistent place. So I think everybody's different motivations, but um, the reason why I wanted to move to the biggest place possible as fast as possible um, was mainly just cause I had no idea what I was doing. And I figured that the best coaches in, in, in my country would be in Vancouver. I figured that the best opportunities would be there. And I felt like I was disciplined enough. And, um, and I guess I think I had enough going for me that I could make it. And so I wanted to be in the, in the, the place where I get the most exposure as fast as possible. Because I didn't want to grind it out for 10 years. I, I I'm not sure if I would have had the patience to do so. Um, so again, like it was all very much just like where I was at in my life at the time and just felt right. But I know for a fact that I also have friends that are that are eking it out from from smaller towns and would get their big break without without ever moving to the big city, and then they'd move after, or they'd even just stay stay back home and continue to get like the biggest jobs of their town or of their city wherever they were. And and so I think there's a lot of different options for a lot of different people in that regard. Yeah, that's interesting that you say that though, um, because it obviously is very true. But I feel like one thing that people need to prioritize more. I, I, I feel like we all do. I know I do is, is uh, being honest with yourself and knowing that there is no one way road. Cause yeah. a lot of the questions that we presented you with, it's, you know what I mean? You're like, well, everyone's different. And yeah. I knew for me specifically, this is the road I took yeah. um, to lead to this destination. But for you, it might be different. And I mm-hmm. think in order to see that and not look for shortcuts in every way, shape or form is to be honest with yourself and be like, yeah. do I, you know, like you said, you're like, I don't know if I, I would have had the patience to go for 10 years, right? Or somebody yeah. might, or whatever it might be, right? Some being honest with yourself and knowing it's like, okay, yeah. If I know myself, like, am I going to be able to do this? Do mm. I want to move to a big city? Yeah. Do I have the discipline to do that? You know what I mean? And kind of like creating your own road 
as it were, um, which I think that's something interesting that you bring up and I, and I don't want it to be overlooked because a lot of people, when they come to videos like this or whatever, they're coming in, they're looking for the answer. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we're going to uncover it. Like we're digging, digging for the, the pirate's chest and we're going to open it. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's an explosion of knowledge like Pandora's box, but Definitely. it's really not that, you know? So I think it's interesting how you're, you know, you put an emphasis on being honest with yourself. And I think yeah. it's important. I think, I think also searching is, is the, is the one other thing that I kind of say is because mm -hmm. I knew a, a lot of people that were kind of like, um, or were honest with themselves, but didn't put enough effort into finding more answers, I guess I would put it that way. I think there's, there's a lot of material online right now. Um, I, I would watch as many self tape auditions as I could online when I was starting off just to get a feel of what like the best I would, I would try to find out what the best actors were doing, how they were auditioning, what it looked like in an audition space compared to just on TV. Cause on TV and in movies, I mean, they're doing five, 10, 15, 20 takes. So, and they're splicing that up with footage of the person with like cinematic music coming in. So that's a very different situation than when you're when you're in a small room by yourself or or with a casting director and you're and you're reading with somebody opposite that you've never met before. Um, and so I think there's a lot of pressure that I put on myself, I guess specifically I guess it's specifically for acting, but where I was just like, hey, I wanna be like like Mark Ruffalo twenty four seven and be like, wait a second, wait a second, like that like step back. Like first of all, he's been doing this for 30, 40 years. Second of all, like what's the top guys your age doing? What do, what, do, what do they look like? What are they putting together? So um, I, I put a lot of effort into trying to figure that out. So I, I put together a, a w one week, uh, one day a week cl class um, with some of the best actors I knew in, in Vancouver. And so I said, hey guys, like if you know anybody, invite them over. We'll put together on, on, uh, on tape stuff like from TV, from film, even theater play pieces. Let's just like figure this shit out together because nobody knows what they're doing. Like nobody. Uh, I've talked to some of the best actors in the world my age. Um, and, and everybody's like figuring out as they go along. So, um, it was just like, let's figure this out together. Let's like find ourselves together. And so, but it was like trying to give myself as much, um, room for success as possible. Um, cause, and, and try to find as many avenues. I was reading backstage.com articles every single day for a year while I was going to film school. I'm trying to learn as much as I could about the industry, about agents, managers, how that worked, how casting worked, how sort of like the studio system worked. Cause there's like Netflix, there's, there's Amazon, there's HBO now, there's, there's stars, there's like all these different companies as well as just network TV and they all function differently. So figure out how, how that differentiates. So like it's, it's all different styles of acting too. If I'm going in for, for NBC for like a comedy pilot, it's gonna be extraordinarily different type of tone or energy that I bring in than if I'm auditioning for Euphoria. Hmm. And so it's, it's like trying to figure that out so that when I, I know myself who I am, I can still tap into the different parts of me that still are suited for the medium that I'm entering into. Mm -hmm. And so there is a lot of research that needs to be done to be able to be, actually do the work at the level that you need to be doing it at. So, so do that research, I think, put the work in and, and, and just, and, and don't like, don't just like wait for it to come to you. Um, but like, just like, I mean, ask questions, like ask the people that you know, ask online there, there's, and then just question it as well. Be like, cause there's a lot of conflicting information online too. So question that what works for you, what makes sense to you again, listen to your heart in that regard. And I think from then on, it's just like, just like kind of forge your own path as best as you can. Yeah. I think it's interesting too, how you're not the only one that's done this, but a lot of people, and it's, it, to me, it's a sign of, um, of being of humility, being humble when they're like, I, you know, I got lucky, mm -hmm. but I find it ironic that it's like, whenever we start to like get to the meat of what, like how they came to be, it's like, you may have gotten lucky in, in the, you know, literal sense of the term, but it's funny because it's like, I feel like you almost have to put yourself in a position to become lucky. And I feel like you and other people, you know what I mean? Like, I, I believe Phil even said it when we interviewed him initially, you know what I mean? He's like, ah, I got lucky. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, like you did in a sense, but it's like you put in so much work from the time that you were, you know, this big to now doing everything that you could. Like you said, like, what's, what's working for the people that are my age? Um, you know, who's doing what and where and why, what works mm -hmm. for me searching for truth, being honest with yourself, things like that. And then it's like, you're inevitably be, you're like putting yourself in a position to have the opportunity. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's like, from there, it might be like someone with their eyes closed and it's a pick out of the hat. But the thing is that you put your name in that hat to begin mm -hmm. with. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. A lot of people, I feel like that's where they unfortunately miss the mark. Um, because you know what I mean? It's like, it's you weren't waiting for it to come fall into your lap. You know what I mean? Like you took the steps necessary in order to put you in the running. You know Definitely. what I mean? Like Definitely. you showed up to the plate, yeah. um, you know, which I think is interesting. And it's a takeaway that, that people, um, you know, could definitely learn something from. I, I'm actually curious. Um, 
about your your uh, your sports endeavors before you, um, you know, before you got into the acting scene, because that's one thing that we love to talk about just in general on, you know, just on the show and in, in personal life is, is fitness and working out and all that kind of jazz. Um, so I'm, um, so tennis was the, was the preferred sport of choice for you? I, I started off with soccer. So I started off with soccer okay. when I was five years old. Um, I, I played that. I was, I was playing, I played that until I was basically like 13. By the time I was like 11, 12, I was, um, coming down to the States for, for some big tournaments. I was playing basically at a junior MLS level. Um, and so I, again, like it, I was, it was, it was, it was great. I had a lot of fun with it. Um, I was really passionate about it at the time. It was kind of what I dreamt of being able to do from a very young age. Um, and then I hit like a massive growth spurt. And so I, I went from being like, still, I was quite tall, but I was like, by the time I hit 16, I, I was six or four, 140 pounds. Um, and so wow. it was like, I was a bean star. And so really tall, super lanky. And again, by the time I was like 13, I hadn't had that massive growth spurt, but I was feeling the effects of it like dramatically. I went from like very, very fast kid to, to just not being able to keep up at all at that level. And so I, for, I, I switched down a level. I, I played up a year, but I was playing like a, at just like a kind of like my city level. And mm -hmm. I just wasn't like, I was just like, this, this isn't for me. Like, I can't do this. Like this, I don't know how long I'd have to grind it out. I don't know when the body's going to kind of adjust. It could be in like three years if I, if I got lucky and I put in the time at the gym or it could be an eight. Um, and I had no idea. And it was just too uncertain for me at the time. And so um, I got lucky. My dad coached the Canadian national junior team for tennis. So he played, he played tennis semi, semi professionally in Europe. And, and so I had a connection in that way. So I switched over to tennis and I played volleyball at school. I played a bit of ice hockey um, on the side. I played some baseball on the side. So I played pretty much every sport out there, but my mm -hmm. focus kind of turned to volleyball and tennis and, and then I started doing that and I kind of went, went ham into that. I was training with my younger brother, um, again, like probably like three hours a day, plus in the gym an hour, and then maybe like a bit of like volleyball practice for an hour and a half with the school. So it was, it was kind of like went heavy into that and probably too heavy considering. <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm, I'm curious to know because I feel, and I could be totally wrong. So correct my ignorance here. If I say, you know, something that's just straight up, not true. I feel that tennis is a sport <clears throat> that can be overlooked and underrated in terms of how much, how skill intensive uh, it can be. Yeah. Um, personally, I genuinely do think that i like, I see it and I look like if I've ever watched it, I'm like, nah, I couldn't fucking do that. You know what I mean? Like, like I'm looking, you know what I mean? Like I take a, like a real hard look and, um, and I feel like that's something that a lot of people don't fully grasp. I'm, I'm curious if there's like any sort of misconceptions that you've heard about it or, or another question I had for you would be like, what things specifically did you do in training that enhanced? Because it's, it's very different, you know what I mean, than what you're doing. It's not that you're running up and down a field, yeah. you're not necessarily like passing the ball. It's like, it's, it's different. It's like these short movements, you know what I mean? These like quick sprints that are like, you know what I mean? With the, like, you got to hit it on a dime or it's like the yeah. whole thing's ruined, you know? So mm -hmm. I'm like curious to, to hear your mind. Like I'm, it's something that genuinely intrigues me. So yeah. I, I don't know. I'm just curious. So the, the sport drove me insane. It, it was by far the best <laughs> sport I ever played in my life. Um, I think that the movement parts of it were, were I think easier than you, than you think in terms of just like having short sprints It's just like you get used to it really fast when you're an athlete, you really do. Yeah. Um, I think that the hardest part about it for me was just the, the technical aspects of the racket of the racket. And it was just like, I mean, with those different types of spins that you're putting on for like uh, switching that up with, with switching from like a, like a, trying to figure out your backhand, whether you're going to hit with a one hander or two hander, how does the body sure. mechanics work? So everybody has a different body that like, like kind of like does certain movements more naturally. And, and it was just like, I mean, I mean, even as like a lanky guy trying to fit that all together with from like, like, especially like with like serving or most of the hits, you're like, everything has to be linked. Like you have to have yeah. like so much subtle muscle connect, like uh, yeah. control. That's just ridiculous compared to soccer where, or where it was just like, I mean, I, I, the amount of cardio, like, like how fit I had to be for soccer was absolutely insane. Mm -hmm. um, but for, for tennis, just the minute muscle movements was just ridiculous. Yeah. It's like and an engineer. It's something I never really, yeah. 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 And it was like yeah. something that never really kind of figured out to, to a level where I was like, okay, I could go professional with this. Uh, my brother was right. way better at it. He was just kicking my ass within like two years of us starting. <laughs> and he was like two and a half years younger than me. So it was super embarrassing, but, um, I mean, it's a lot of fun. And, and I think the biggest part about it for me was more the mental aspect, it was just like psychologically was just so difficult for me to go in like one-on-one -on -one with somebody with a sport where it's just like, it's not continuous, 
where like each time, every time you, you're feeling good about yourself, you have to reset. You have 30 mm. seconds. Okay, now you have to serve again, or they can take it over long. They want to serve, or you finish the game. You guys go switch sides. You have another minute and a half, two minute break. And that entire time you're questioning, okay, well, how do I shift to how they're, 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 yeah. they're shifting around. Yeah. And so it's like a, basically a game of chess with muscle involved. No, it's, it's, wow. no, it's, no, it's, it's, it's a hard also, game. It's a hard no, game. No, for sure. The serves. And I played JV tennis. I went seven and seven. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Man. No, it's super <laughs> technical. And I think there's two really, really important aspects that, that you bring to light, especially um, that at least that ring true in my mind is number one, it's a one-on-one sport. Yeah. Right. And I feel like a lot of people overlook that in general. There's no one else to blame but yourself. I've always been a fan personally of one on one sports. Like I, I'm into a lot of mixed martial arts and stuff like okay. that. It's yeah. like you can never you can never walk away from there and be like, it was that guy's fault. You know what I mean? Like so and so didn't pass the ball. I would have I would have crushed it. You know what I mean? Like it's like, no, like you lost. And because that guy was better than you. Yeah. Straight up. There yeah. is no, there is no excuse. So like that takes a, a big mental toll. You know what I mean? Um, I remember being, you know, playing sports or whatever. And if it was like wrestling, I know it was a big one where it was like, if kids would lose sometimes, like if you didn't have a good control of your emotions, they would sob. Like you'd see it all the time. Cause it's like, you feel like you failed. You know what I mean? It's like this guy bested me. And it's like, I feel like mentally that's a big deal, right? Like one-on-one. And I also think it's interesting in particular with tennis that you bring it up. Something I didn't even think about is like, when you're winning in something, it's like you, you build this momentum of confidence. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like a mm. snowball. And yeah. it's like, oh, like say you're versing someone that's like supposed to be very good at what they're doing. And it's like you score on them, right? Mm. But the game's continuous. It's like, oh, fuck, I scored on them. I'm better mm. than I thought. You know what I mean? Like, let's keep this going. Go, go, go. But it's like in tennis, it's like you do it. And it's like, all right, now everyone walk back to starting. And it's like, all right, did I just get lucky or, you know what I mean? It's like this whole mental battle, like in between the suspense would like, is like killer, you know? So I think that's funny because I never thought of that. Like when you said that, it's like, you have to mentally reset every time and you have to like take a step back. It's like, it's like those games where you have a dial and if it's like, it, like the bar's going up and you have to like catch it right in this middle. And yeah, if you go yeah. too high, you know what I mean? It's like, you fuck it up. But if you go too low, you know, it's like, I don't know. I just find I found it very intriguing and I feel like, um, it's something that I wanted to learn more about, you know, but, um, you know, on my own time, whatever, but I'm, I'm curious, um, if you have, if, if you've experienced anything, um, coming from the world of sports, yeah. um, that has directly correlated or translated to the arts and acting realm. And obviously like the discipline and stuff plays a key factor in that. And, you know, you were pumping up your brother and you and stuff. But uh, one thing I would say is that I, I genuinely think barring some crazy circumstances that, any of you could be successful in really whatever the hell you want it to be because you have the work ethic and drive to do so. So I, I'm assuming a lot of those things correlate, but I'm wondering like if you came, like if there was anything in particular that came, um, that came over and helped you, you know, when you made the transition. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I think like, like you said, I think most of it was just like a mental aspect of it. Um, I think going to audition rooms, I think it was nice to be able to get used to like the nerves with the one-on-one -on -one type of situations where you're just mm -hmm. like, yeah, this is, this is never going to be comfortable. I'm never going to go into a room where I'm being judged and be just okay with that. It's just like, it's just not human nature to be, to be fine in that situation like that. Um, and so, cause it's like, I mean, there's, there's, it's a collaborative effort, but there still is like, are you what we need? And so, I mean, even if they're rooting for you, there is this like, like looking at you to see if you fail. And, and I mean, obviously mm -hmm. that's not the, the, the point of what they're doing, but that is the case. And, and so, um, I think getting used to, to being, uh, um, play, playing sports and, and to that kind of competitive nature was just like, it was, it was really helpful going into those situations. I mean, I think, I think actually on a, like an emotional basis, it's completely different. I think with, with sports, you want to be very contained, um, mm -hmm. to, to a certain degree. And, and with, um, acting, it's just like so much of it's about being super vulnerable, um, mm -hmm. and being just really open to everything that you're feeling and, and, and the situation that the other character's in, which means you have to be genuinely open to the nerves that are going to hit you with the audition too. So um, I think that was the, some, the, the thing that took me probably the longest to kind of get used to. Um, because it's just like, again, like not a good feeling. Like you don't want to be vulnerable. You want to be able sure. to be like, come in super confident. Like I'm the, like, come like as the athletic bro and be just like, yeah, let's do this. But then you can't, go into the scenes where your character's mom just died and just start sobbing away because you have this mask that you've put on and it's more than just a mask. It's like an energy type of thing where you switch your energy. And 
And to be able to be vulnerable, you have to kind of strip that away so that when somebody's like giving you something that's even like fake, like it's just, it is just a made up story that allows you to like, you'd be so vulnerable that it hits you and, and genuinely makes you feel things. Um, so I think that was like almost made it like more difficult in a way with having that kind of athletic background where just like, it's, it's usually a lot of bros who aren't trying to be necessarily super vulnerable with one another. Um, there, there is this sense of companionship and team team and like brothership that that's always apparent. And so there is a innate vulnerability in that, but it's also a lot of people putting on masks so that they don't like show too much of their weakness. Cause I think in a team environment, however much you, you want it to be this thing that's super collaborative all the time, you're a bunch of teenagers, teenagers suck. Like nobody knows what they're doing. Everybody's trying to figure out themselves. And so it's like, if you show too much vulnerability, that gets like, they pounce on it. And it's just like, they'll, they'll tear that apart. And I had that happen many, many times. Mm. And so just like, you don't want to be that guy. And so there's a lot of going back into my past and being like, Hey, we're just because that happened before doesn't mean it's going to happen again. We got to figure out a way to be confident with who we are, despite having some of that confidence stripped through the athletic kind of process and through high school um, and find that again, build that up so that when we get into these types of situations, we're okay with just being us and really the, like the core of who we are. And then, and then trying to like navigate the emotionality of that to suit the scene. But I think it's really is always just you. Um, and so that's, I think the hardest part, I think coming from athletic background, but I mean, on just in terms of discipline, I mean, it was, it was like priceless. So, yeah. Yeah. wow. Yeah. I love that. Well said. Yeah. Uh, you, Every answer, I'm just like learning, 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 <laughs> yeah, sure. taking it all in. Wow, yeah, uh, we no, are running good. out of time, but I do have one more question that I kind of want to throw at you before we say goodbye here. Um, after filming the half of it, obviously that's a you've had experience before that, but on a bigger stage, on a bigger audience here, what did, did you take away from that in terms of learning experience, and, and what are you? How is it different for you now as an actor? And whether that be on the audition side of things or how you approach something, or I know that you went from like a couple thousand followers to like a hundred thousand. You got your, your blue check on Instagram. You got everybody throwing who wants your attention now. So I just want to hear how that's kind of changed and how you're moving forward with, from that experience. And now that the film is released yeah, man. kind of with that. That's a great question. Um, Dude, it's like so much of it's just like trying to take it day by day. Um, I mean, like when you when you get like a bunch of followers on Instagram, you have, like it does. I have no idea what that means. Like really, like like it just like it's Preach. like <laughs> it's about the movie, and then hopefully they they like my performance. But like again, I've been doing this for so for for such a short amount of time. They have no idea who I am. Like I could be the biggest asshole in the world, and they would have no idea. They could be like, oh, we love Paul Munsky. and 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 I think so many people make the assumption that that's you. And 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 though there's a lot of me in Paul. There's also, I'm, I'm also extraordinarily different than him. And so it is this, this weird thing of being like, okay, well, what does this mean for me going forward? Um, in terms of just like, how do I have a social online presence where, where I'm beneficial to people? I, I, don't, I don't want to be posing pictures of myself shirtless just to get more followers, just so I can make a bit of extra cash on the side through like endorsements. But I also am like, this is also business. So I think it's a lot, very confusing for me at the moment. I'm still figuring it out as fast as I can. Um, I have no idea what I'm doing with it. Um, I'm, so I've been asking some people that I know, and, and again, they're all doing it their own way as, as best as they can. It's, so it's, it's, it's a really strange thing, like really, really strange. And so um, I think mostly I'm trying to focus on the work because that's kind of what I know. Like acting, that's, that's the stuff that I fell in love with. And that's kind of the reason why I was here from the start. And so I think, like you said, like it, it has changed a lot for me career-wise. I mean, la last year I got a few offers I couldn't take just because of visa issues, but I have the full visa now. And so we were looking at a few projects before COVID hit. And, and so now it's like waiting things out, trying to see how things go. It's, it's, um, it's, been, it's been interesting. I think there's a, a lot of different avenues I can take from here. There's like the, the studio kind of, kind of route where you're, you're doing like these big budget films that are like hitting a wide audience, but then there's kind of like these really heartfelt indies that I kind of fell in love with when I started watching more movies. And I'm like, that would be dope to, sh to go on. And, and right now I'm just like, really, I, I'm trying to put together the best team that I can. And so I have amazing managers, I have amazing agents that are kind of guiding me through this to see like, what is the best next move. And, um, and, and right now, so I'm just like trying to figure that all out really, man. Um, I think it was, it was huge for my confidence for sure. I mean, I, I had the benefit of testing for some really cool projects with some incredible individuals beforehand. So I was at the level where I was just like, I, I really believe I can be doing this right now. 
and, and, and deliver the, 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 the work that they're expecting. Um, and so I think that that's continuing going forward and it's just like, okay, hopefully I can, I can work with some people that have some really dope stories to tell and kind of like kind of run with that. Um, auditioning, I mean, again, it's like, it's, it's so influenced by COVID right now. So uh, I'm, I'm taping a little bit, but there's basically no projects really going on. Finally, things are starting to pick up literally this, this upcoming week. Um, and so it's like, yeah, I think that's going to, it's going to be interesting to see how that really develops from here on in. Um, I'm, I'm taping from home. I, I've got a little setup here. My girlfriend, she's an incredible actress. So she helps me out with those and I help her out with her tapes. And, um, we're just trying to like figure out the best way possible from this point. And, um, I think just trying to just like do like, like approach everything that comes my way in it, just like as, as normal and intelligent way as possible, but we're also trying to be proactive. Like I'm writing a script right now. Um, I, I'm trying to like take meetings with people that I'm really excited about their work and be like, Hey, what's like, what are you putting together right now? Like, what would, what are you thinking about for the future? And, and just like to get to make some relationships that in the future, if there's anything that we both really want to do that we're both passionate about, we can kind of jump on together. Um, so I think that's been the biggest benefit of, of get, kind of getting my name out there is just to sort of to be seen and, and have other people willing to like, just talk with me. Um, whereas before it was just like, it was only if I put together a really, really good tape that they'd be interested at all. And so now it's just like the sort of reputation. I mean, we, we won Tribeca, which was insane. And, and so there's a little bit of a professional kind of, um, interest there, which has been, been really cool to kind of see go forward. But yeah, I mean, I think that's the best answer I can give you. Wow. Well, awesome it's a answer. great answer at that. Yeah. Well, we are officially out of time. Daniel, I feel like we could talk all day long, but I want to thank you so much for coming on, bro. It is great to see yes. you again. It's great to learn from you. I'm sure a lot of people will take a lot away from this. I so. hope so. Absolutely. Thank you for your time. Thank Daniel you Deamer, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> thank you so much.